Jasmine, it's yours. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for, for joining us. We're really excited and honored to have now um, Evelyn Tang, who will now tell us about her living histories, and, and I'll pass it on to her to let her maximize the time. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here and a lot of um, actually things in common with the previous speaker. So that's a lot of fun. Um, well, firstly, I have to um, somehow Southeast Asia has already appeared um, because when Jason was talking about Singapore. So I'm from Malaysia, which is the neighbor of Singapore. I just want to highlight Southeast Asia that is in red because it's not the most well-known region. Um, so um, and Kuala Lumpur is the capital of Malaysia and that's where I'm from. And uh, Southeast Asia is an amazing place. Malaysia, for example, has um, very multicultural and um, beautiful beaches, um, uh, great food, and of course, amazing biodiversity. As you can see, we have orangutans, tigers, um, giant tropical uh, fauna and flora. And uh, as I said, Malaysia is a very multicultural place. And in fact, there are um, Indians, Chinese, Malays, and so this is a picture of uh, my family. We um, were Chinese immigrants. My grandparents escaped to Malaysia from China in World War II. Um, they were escaping the, the Japanese. This is my grandma. She was um, um, a teacher in high school. And you know, I think it's her love of learning that influenced a lot of us. My dad's an engineer. Um, this is my sister and my um, brother. This is myself. Uh, my mom and uh, my sister is also a faculty. She's at uh, Utah in the chemistry department. And this is us again, nerding out for sure. And um, I um, loved um, science and math early on. I think it's because of my dad, who was an engineer, a very serious engineer. And, um, you know, I, I uh, took to physics very quickly. I remember, um, you know, studying Halliday and Resnick, um, sort of uh, looking at it really fascinatedly. I won a gold medal in the Singapore Physics Olympiad when I was in high school. Um, and then after that, it was time for college. And that was when, you know, some real world facts started to hit me. Um, there are, Malaysia is very multicultural, but that many races also has a, a bunch of racial tensions associated. And there are racial quotas. And in fact, for um, anyone who's non-Malay, so Chinese, Indians, everyone else, um, there are quotas in the universities, in business, et cetera. And so that meant that it was very difficult for myself and many of my friends to attend university in Malaysia. Um, so many people went abroad. I had friends go to Russia, to Hong Kong, Australia, um, Singapore, everywhere. And um, I was lucky enough to come to the U.S., uh, for college, um, you know, Jason already mentioned financial aid, you know, uh, so grateful for um, this generosity because that's how I could attend, attend Yale and um, you know, getting to know lots of different people. But that sense of realizing that I couldn't attend university in my own home country and what that meant and the systematic injustices that I realized that, you know, my, my family had to fight um, all the time really lingered with me. And, you know, I was um, an angsty, you know, late teenager, and um, I thought to myself, well, this needs to change. And I thought to myself that physics wasn't, wasn't going to change anything. Um, and so I decided that I wanted to, you know, try and help make the world a better place. And in my, and at the time I thought that that meant social change and um, in a very directed way. And because of that, I started to uh, study social sciences, especially sociology. I think also coming to the U.S. and being in the U.S. for the first time was just a big shock, and I was so curious to understand what all these cultural differences were. Um, and I, then I also studied Italian, you know, just to get insight into a different culture, and um, it's also a very beautiful language and culture. And so, you know, this was going on, and I took, you know, finished my sociology classes. I was going to do research. Um, and then in junior year, I took physics again, really to fulfill my science requirements. And I took, so I took introductory physics and from Shankar. And I suppose many of you know him, if not him in person, but his textbooks. And you know, he's, he's an amazing educator. He's written um, fantastic quantum mechanics textbook, mathematical physics textbook, and, and many others. And um, you know, taking his class was something that really just, just opened my eyes in a, in a really particular way. And I was very struck because in fact, um, that year Shankar won um, a teaching prize from the APS and uh, that really recognized his amazing contributions to teaching and the Yale News did an article about it and uh, you know Shankar asked them to 
um, interview me because, you know, I was one of these, you know, um, rare cases that really switched from sociology to physics uh, in large part because of his class. And, you know, this was his introductory class. And this was a quote, you know, that's, that's, that I, that was this recorded that, you know, Shankar really introduced difficult concepts like quantum mechanics, you know, again, in an intro class in a way that made the physics really approachable and understandable. And then I added, and he's also just very funny. And it was just that elegant way he introduced physics and also very funny and very down to earth that really showed me that this was a different way to think about physics that wasn't just cramming. Um, that was something that, you know, I was um, more used to uh, back in high school. And especially quantum mechanics was a whole different world. And that, you know, um, um, really made me change my mind. And I switched back into physics, of course, again, with uh, Shankar's support. And so this is really a testament to how fantastic teaching can, um, well, do so, so much. And so then, you know, this started me on my intellectual path. I went to MIT and I did topological phases in quantum systems. Um, and this was, you know, in some sense, I do see that there is an intellectual connection also um, from sociology, because that that's really the study of collective behavior, which, um, you know, is something that the other speakers have discussed. And, and thinking about collective behavior and emergence was something that fascinated me that you see very much in quantum systems. But I became fascinated by emergence and also um, different and new systems where I thought the questions were extremely compelling. And so then for my postdoc, I switched into studying the brain. I love this article from APS that uh, captures this very nicely. Um, the brain is calling you. And there I started to think about how from a physicist point of view, we can bring um, new insight into questions in biology. And then um, I went to Germany in Gottingen where I was a group leader. And there I actually started to think more about how we could develop um, um, theory and especially topological theory for stochastic and biological systems and thinking about how that can model emergent dynamics and especially new dynamical behavior such as we see here in modeling the circadian rhythm um, and other biological systems can be very useful, which brings me to my group at Rice. And, um, you know, it's, it's funny, life is so unexpected. And uh, I just want to just add in that when I went to Germany, um, to me, the science was fascinating, but I, 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 and I took German, but it's uh, also, again, a very different language. You know, I, I thought, okay, I already speak Chinese and Italian. You know, I, I, I didn't learn German that well. There was also the lockdown at the time. And so, you know, integration was very difficult. And I, for me, I thought, I can't wait to get back to the U.S. And so I was applying to jobs in the U.S. from Germany. And um, I, you know, got an offer at Rice and I signed the job offer. And then I met a German guy. And, uh, well, you know, it's um, fascinating. This is on his first trip to visit me in Texas. And uh, now I have a German husband and even my baby is German as well as American. So, you know, you never know what to expect. And I think this brings me to, you know, some of my uh, little things that I've sort of understood over the years. Um, well, the first one is, I think, to do what you love, not what you feel is right. And I'm amazed that also this was really echoed in previous talks. And and part of how I saw that was also in thinking about physics versus sociology, because for me, sociology was about wanting to fight injustice and wanting to make to to make things better, but it was really focused on you know change, and this was something that was very external. And I could see how you know if change didn't happen or if change was slow, then I could see that you know activists around me getting jaded, getting disappointed, burning out, and I could see that this was not sustainable. And so, in some sense, to do things because this is something that you're passionate about, because when you feel one drawn to in a more in a more you know organic or intrinsic way, I think it's much more important than doing it because you're focused on the outcome. This was something that I, you know, understood um, um, uh, in those uh, years of soul searching as a, as a, in, my, in college. And the other fascinating thing is, is you know, um, I liked how Jason talks about being oneself. And I do see that being oneself, it's really unexpected the way that intellectual themes and ideas grow and evolve and return. Um, in one's life, the way that this idea of collective motion and emergence came back, has come back and keeps repeating itself in so many different ways in my life. Topology came back in a very unexpected way, again, now as something that, you know, could be really um, predicting new phenomena also in biology. And lastly, that life is full of surprises that you never know. And I think in academia, you, we move around a lot, we move to new places and we explore new fields and that's definitely challenging. But along the way, sometimes you find also amazing treasures. And I'm going to end here. Thanks so much, Evelyn. That was, that was fantastic. Um, I'm going to ask a, a question from from the chat. One of one of the 
kind of themes, obviously, in your presentation is that, you know, things are cyclic, things that have been in the past come up again and again sometimes. Um, one of the things you highlighted is how activism played an important role for you early on. Uh, how do you integrate that if you do into to your faculty life now? Yeah, um, that is very interesting. And actually, I, I do like what Radhika said about that, that in some sense, it's the way that I live it, you know, the way that I think, the way that I um, also try to have conversations with the people around me, how I try to, you know, explore new ideas, um, both, um, you know, clearly in my work and with my students, but also in the university, in a larger society around me. And I think just by um, being true to what I live and the reality that I live and thinking about how we can, you know, make things better just for, for, for us in a more livable way, because I think it's really the needs of people on the day to day that are the most important if we can fight for that. And so being true to my own experience and living that, I think it's is um, what I've learned to understand is the most important, um, more than responding to what other people might perceive as needs, but you know that may not resonate with myself as much. And I do think that there, um, women have a lot to offer. You know, I mean, having just you know had a baby, I realized how much our healthcare system is not often very helpful for women a lot. You know, so much of the time, and just recognizing these things and speaking up and trying to fight for that, like. I see that, you know, that's making changes also in a small way just by trying to be who I am. Thanks so much.